Rochester Public Schools has now released its final safe and open schools learning plan with the hope to keep schools and the district both safe and open during the school year ahead. Now, the recommendation in place are based on guidance from the CDC, the Minnesota Department of Health, and the Minnesota Department of Education. Plans include multiple mitigation strategies from face coverings to field trips to visitors and volunteers. We all want to keep our schools here in Rochester both safe and open. And in fact, we're releasing a plan today to do just that. And in developing that plan, we paid attention not only to national and local medical and public health experts, but we also listened to you. In fact, we got thousands of comments on that plan, and we've carefully integrated them into the final recommendations that we're releasing today. Schools and programs within the district will update their COVID-19 preparedness plans to align with the overall strategy. Whatever your perspective is on the plan and the specific components of it, whether it's masks or social distancing, I want you to know that we listen to you, to students, to parents, to community members, and that we are uh, trying to balance the competing priorities that we have um, to move forward in this new school year. And of course, as this is a work in progress, RPS will continue to update this safe and open school plan as the science changes and additional input from the community is received. Well, we start with new developments out of Afghanistan. It is Saturday morning there, and we just learned the United States military struck back, bombing a group from the Islamic State. The airstrike comes in retaliation for the devastating suicide bombing on Thursday. Tonight, we're getting a better idea who the 13 U.S. troops killed in that bombing were. 11 Marines, a Navy sailor, and an Army soldier were killed. 18 other service members were wounded. The Associated Press reports some of those killed came from across the U.S., including Wyoming, Missouri, and Texas. The U.S. says it was the most lethal day for American forces in Afghanistan since 2000.